What's up, everybody? That was a lame attempt at speaking whale. I know I've been MIA from my reviews for a bit, but let's get real, sometimes life gets a little bit crazy. But I'm back, so expect more reviews and videos, whether you asked for it or not. Honestly, what a better way to kick off my return than with finding Dory. Now we all know that it's a bad time in the sequel world. It's been a while since we've really had a decent one animated or live action, with the exception of maybe Captain America Civil War. But when it comes to Disney Pixar films, I kind of like to pretend that Cars 2 and Monsters University didn't exist. But before I get into all things Finding Dory, I have to give a mention to the short before the film Piper. Holy cow is this good. The animation is absolutely phenomenal. That little bird totally adorable. The storyline, oh, it just gets you right there and I kind of want one of those little pet birds. So be sure you get to the theater on time so you don't miss that incredible short, which I'm pretty sure will probably be nominated for an Oscar this year. Now back to our favorite blue tang. Finding Dory picks up a year after the events of Finding Nemo. First we meet Baby Dory, who might be the fucking cutest Pixar character ever, or definitely in my top three. The, the cute little voice, and you add in those really big eyes that are bigger than her body, and oh, your heart will just melt immediately. As soon as she made her first appearance, it was just like, Everybody was in love with little Dory. Now we get some backstory into kind of how Dory learned to deal with her short-term memory as a kid and the relationship that she had with her parents who were very loving and very encouraging. But where we pick up a year later, Dory ends up hitting her head and remembering where she's from. So she decides that she is going to set off on a journey to try to find her parents and reunite because she misses them. We end up at the Marine Life Institute where Dory ends up meeting this grumpy octopus or um, a septopus who's named Hank. He's your typical tough on the exterior but has a big heart, well in this case three hearts, on the inside. We also meet Dory's old whale pal, Destiny, and one of my favorite new characters, a beluga whale named Bailey, who has some issues with his little echolocation. And he is perfectly voiced by Ty Burrell from Modern Family. So the big question is, will Dory find her parents? If she does, will they remember her? Well, you kind of go on that adventure in the film, so you'll have to check it out to find out all the details. So my thoughts on the movie. I think Finding Dory is a very well done sequel. Pixar hasn't had much luck lately with those sequels, so this helped restore my faith that they're gonna be good from now on. So I'm super excited for Toy Story 4 and Incredibles 2. I'm still not gonna pretend that Cars 3 is gonna exist, but sadly it is. I wasn't really too sure whether I'd like a whole movie focused on Dory, because let's face it, her memory loss, it is better in small doses. It can get very annoying in this film, and you just kind of want to scream at the screen like, we get it already, we know you're lost or you forgot. So it gets a little overwhelming, but for some reason, when little Dory has to keep repeating everything and has her memory loss, it comes off as adorable. So, and the only really other annoying part is the whale speak. It's cute for a while as well, but, but when they have whole like 10 minute conversations or whatever in whale speak, it can kind of give you a headache, so beware of that. The story as a whole is probably more well done than many of the live action films out there lately. Like, who knew that sea creatures could be so four dimensional, three dimensional, just dimensional in general? The film does kind of get heavy throughout at different times and can bring you down a bit, but thankfully it doesn't last for long. Each of those heavier times, of course, brings along a life lesson and I wish that there kind of weren't as many life lessons thrown at you maybe just like one or two main ones not like four or five which I feel like this has because instead of a steady slope up to like the climax and then you have your big dramatic moment and then you kind of build up again um, after that conflict and darker spot it just kind of goes like this and it, it you know you start to to get brought up and then you're immediately back down and then back up and down and up and down I also feel like with too many life lessons you kind of for, they're just so brushed over or thrown in your face that you just kind of want one or two main ones but there's a lot of good ones in here and i hope kids really do pick up on them finding dory is a little formulaic and predictable however as the skeleton does follow much of what you know in finding nemo you know a sad tragic event of some sort set out on a journey lost fish captured fish um happy ending maybe happy ending and then some of the parts are there's, there's a part that's like super far-fetched even for an animated movie that can kind of take you to the point of being super ridiculous, more ridiculous than talking birds, fish, and sea lions. Now on to the characters. I loved all the new characters in this film. I kind of wish there we had a little bit more time with some of them. You do get 
quite a bit of time with the whales that I've already mentioned and of course Hank who I think I connect to a lot which is a little scary. There's also a bird named Becky who steals the show as well as these super freaking cute otters. Um, otters are my favorite animal so I got super giddy when these otters came on screen. I want to buy every stuffed animal because you know Finding Dory will make a ton at the box office but it's also going to rake in the big bucks with merchandising. Like I'm ready to stand in line and buy all the stuffed animals from this. Don't worry, <laughs> I'm an adult, <laughs> sort of. So overall, I think Finding Dory is a very worthy sequel. The animation is absolutely stunning and it can be enjoyed by kids and adults alike. There's something for everybody. I think it does what exactly what it should and it delivers characters you care about, characters with an arc and a heartwarming message and a lesson to learn, which is something that Pixar is really great at. The Finding Dory hits theaters June 17th, so be sure to check it out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, including your favorite parts, your favorite new characters, and where this maybe ranks on your Pixar movies list. Uh, Pixar movies are also full of Easter eggs, and Finding Dory is no different. And in fact, I've um, gone through the film, at least the first time that I saw it, and picked out a few of the Easter eggs I found right away. So that's also going to be on the channel if you want to check that out, along with some other cool stuff. Yeah, so be sure you subscribe and everything, and thanks for hanging out with me, listening to me ramble about movies. Hope you come back, and I am Lisa, and I will see you next time.